Thank you, Dr. Kim and Dr. Galar. Good morning, everyone. And good to see old friends and uh, new friends together today. And the, uh, the topic I was given is the, about the terminology. A lot of people debate whether it's crisscross heart or superior inferior ventricles, and there is the, a sort of new terminology introduced in the literature. Actually, we initiated it, uh, which is called the topsy turvy heart, and then to make it clear what all this terminology means. Okay. So it is about a kind of abnormal, unexpected relationship of the ventricles, mostly. So here in this the, uh, uh, drawing, uh, the actually 3D rendered image, right atrium connects to the right ventricle and giving rise to the aorta, and left, ventri left atrium, left ventricle to pulmonary trunk. In long axis view, a straightforward, complete transposition of the great arteries. In the lower panel, actually same. The right atrium connects to the superior right ventricle, and left atrium comes down to the inferior left ventricle. Aorta gives the right ventricle gives rise to the aorta and left ventricle to the pulmonary trunk behind. In oblique view, it is very clear RV to aorta and LV to PA. So actually, these two hearts physiologically the same, but the problem is that uh, spatial relationship of the ventricles especially uh, is completely unexpected for the uh, physiology given, anatomy given. So if you look at the uh, back of the heart, usually the interatrial septum goes down to the interventricular septum. This is the AV junction, this is a crooks. And then um, the, oops. The atrioventricular connection almost always parallel. If you have four chamber view, mitral valve, the tricuspid valve open in the same direction. In short axis view, you see the uh, in face of the mitral and uh, tricuspid valve at the same time. However, in this heart, uh, the atrioventricular connection is not parallel anymore. So that is the essential feature of this the, the abnormality. And in this heart, if you look at this, this is a very strange heart that was the provided to the, by Dr. Wali from Seoul National University Hospital. And then there is juxtaposition of the atrial appendages and right atrium connects the right ventricle here, left atrium connects the left ventricle. It is not actual view, it is the AP view, which means that atria and ventricle are they aligned in superior inferior fashion. Inside is that something like this, in coronal view, not in axial view. This the uh, heart was given the name topsy-turvy heart. I didn't know what the topsy-turvy heart is. And then what it means is that cakes are stacked on top of each other. That is topsy-turvy cake. So that's how it, it, this name came from. So first the question is that are crisscross hearts and superior inferior ventricles different entities? Yes, no, yes and no. So have your answer in your mind. And then is crisscross appearance a visual illusion? As Dr. Van Fra a long time ago said, crisscross is not real, it's visual illusion only. So let's think about the segmental approach. The heart consists of three segments and two junctions, which connects the segments. Fundamentally important, which was introduced by Michael Tyner in 1979, when congenital heart is seen, you need to look at three important aspects of construction of the heart, which includes morphology, relationship, and connection. Okay, so here that on your left side is normal heart for chamber view. This is a congenitally corrected transposition, atrioventricular discordance. You always have the AV connection parallel. But however, if you look at this heart, four chamber is given, but you don't see the atrioventricular connection at all. What does it mean? So if you think about just above this plane, right atrium connects to the right ventricle, and left atrium connects to the left ventricle in such a way. If you look at it from the above, there certainly is a crisscrossing. There is no visual illusion at all. So. This is called the disharmony between the connection and relationship. For the given connection, relationship is completely unexpected. 
So this is a very classic coronal view of this disease entity. What do you mean? What I mean is that this is diaphragm, this is superior, this is the left side, right side. You can see that right atrium is very unusually elongated superior inferiorly, and tricuspid valve is displaced far off from the diaphragm here, I will see here. Left ventricle spatially touches the right atrium, there is no connection. If you have the, the, the imaging transverse view here, you have this. If you have the uh, additional axial view here, you will have this. And then uh, below that, you have this. So therefore, above you have your right atrium connects to the right ventricle in this direction, and left atrium connects to the left ventricle in this direction. This is the essential feature of so-called crisscross. But however, there are spectral the nature of this disease. If you this kind of uh, distortion of the AV relationship is a little, and then questioning whether it is really crisscross or not. So. Here, additional finding is if you look at the atrial septum, atrial septum is angled. The whole thing, to me, is like this. This is the, the cartoon of the complete transposition of the great arteries. Hold the heart with a complete TGA on the back with the hand. And then right hand on, in the apex, twist its heart from the apex, holding the back fixed. And right ventricle moves up, left ventricle moves down right here, and then aorta moves to the left and pulmonary trunk moves to the right. So this is a very classic crisscross heart. So which means the right atrium connects the right ventricle, left atrium connects the left ventricle here. So we usually say complete TGA as DTGA, the reason being aorta is on the right side of the pulmonary trunk. But in crisscross heart, most of the heart time, aorta moves to the left instead of right. So it's called the Cytosolitus, D loop, and L post aorta, so called breakage of loop rule, SDL. That is a good example of a crisscross heart. But however, Zhang Wuk saw a pathologist here, and I, might, I used to fight to each other whether it is crisscross heart or superior inferior ventricles. And then we gradually uh, found that the, the debate arises when this twisting is very little, you only see ventricle superior inferior. And then if your twisting is a lot, you clearly see crisscross. That's why we introduced the terminology twisted heart, which explains the spectral nature of the disease. Okay, so this is an example. 3D model shows right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle here, and VSD is here. Above the, the right ventricle, there are two ventricles going. Certainly, the ventricle relationship is very, very abnormal. This is a good example of this. And if you look at the inside, you can clearly see superior ventricle and inferior ventricle. VSD is here. Ventricular septum is a little bit twisted. And then if I open uh, the base of the heart and then see that from above, and then I put the uh, small uh, candy stick into the uh, tricuspid and mitral valve, you can see these sticks not parallel. They are crossing, right? That's the nature of this disease entity. What about this? Externally, appearance is very similar, right ventricle above, left ventricle below. In this case, however, right ventricle connects to the inferior left ventricle and left atrium connects to the superior right ventricle and then right ventricle gives you the aorta and pulmonary trunk is behind there. So what it is is a starting from the congenitally corrected transposition of the great arteries. So right atrium, left ventricle to pulmonary trunk and left atrium to right ventricle to aorta Hold this heart with your left hand behind, and then with your hand in the apex, twist counterclockwise. I'm trying to confuse you because one is the clockwise and this is counterclockwise. Very difficult to remember, but there is a very simple rule. Works that more than 98% of the time, which is that twisting occurs to place the right ventricle on top of the left ventricle. There are less than 10 cases in the literature having left ventricle on top of the right ventricle. So therefore, you just remember the uh, twisting concept. 
always this twisting is to place the right ventricle on top of the left ventricle. So that is how. So you see that because it is counterclockwise, right ventricle on the left is moving on to uh, the upper aspect here. Left ventricle on the right is moving below. So you have mostly superior inferior relationship. So this is LTGA because usually aorta is on the left side. However, if you think about twisting, aorta is moved to the right and pulmonary trunk moves to the left. So therefore, in this case, cytosolitus, L-loop ventricle, and deposed arterial trunk. So in this, the Vampra SDL, SDLL type of thing, if you see D doesn't go to with D or L doesn't go to L, one of the good example is twisted heart. Another is so-called anatomically corrected malposition. So anyway, inside, you can see that the right ventricle is here. This is the tricuspid valve. VSD is here. Aorta arises from here. The VSD is here, but uh, from the left ventricle, pulmonary trunk is going to the uh, here uh, behind the aorta. So to summarize it, I don't want, don't want to go off the... Uh, too much detail, just to think about this, this is category and the concept of twisting. So remember that your left hand should hold the back of the heart. Your right hand is in the apex twisting the heart to make the right ventricle on top of the left ventricle. And you can have a minor twisting, greater degree of twisting, extreme twisting. That is how the, the whole spectrum moves from superior inferior ventricle to uh, the complete uh, the crisscrossing. So it is in the example of uh, complete transposition and congenitally correct transposition. So nature of it is what? Because of twisting, it is characterized by non-parallel atrioventricular connection axis and unexpected chamber and great arterial relationship and position. Positions. This is the hallmark of whole spectrum of this disease. So nature of twisting along the base apex axis. To place the right ventricular inlet superior and anterior to the left ventricular inlet in most, not all cases, there are exceptions. Clockwise twisting in D-loop ventricles and counterclockwise twist in L-loop ventricles. Essential findings, non-parallel opening axis of the valves. Echo, if we are not able to make your two valves parallel, and this is a beginning to see this twisted nature of AV connection. Unexpected ventricular relationship for the given AV connection, angled atrial septum, curved configuration of ventricular septum, and unexpected great arterial relationship for the given disease. Okay. Features of surgical importance include juxtaposition is not uncommon, and VSD is usually inlet. AV valve abnormalities, including hypoplasia and straddling overriding, very common. And ventricular hypoplasia, usually the right ventricle, and abnormal atrioventricular conduction axis, and abnormal VA connection in most cases. Okay, so you may have seen this, so-called topology, chirality, or whatever. I don't want to explain this because it is just a radical explanation, it's useless. If you understand the nature of twisting this, you don't have to use your hand to understand this. So if you understand the, the really uh, pathology in uh, the concept of twisted heart, and then uh, consequence is this, and then mentally untwist that, and then you don't have to use your hand to make the right hand pattern or left hand pattern. So another category is that simply apex is tilted up and then you will have a super or inferior relationship of the ventricles. So therefore, are crisscross heart and super or inferior ventricles different entities? Yes and no, because a large number of cases are actually the same, but there are cases only one side. So, is a visual illusion? No, it is real. It is true, actually, crisscrossing. So, we experienced one interesting case at fetal echo. You can see that here, yeah, this is a diaphragm, stomach is here, four chambers are in coronal the plane. And then, after birth, CT scan, diaphragm is here, four chambers related in such a way. It's not actual view. How could it? So, the reason how it happened is that the heart is, now that you use both hands, 
And then they, I'm sorry that uh, the uh, giving analogs to this in barbecue chicken, you just do rotate everything, okay, along the or the ax the axis of the wrong axis of the heart, rotating, not twisting. And then uh, right ventricle and the left ventricle, the right atrium move up, left atrium and left ventricle move down, and you will have this relationship. The pro this is why that it is called topsy turvy heart. And the problem of this is by doing that, great arterial the position is very different. Because of that rotation, aorta and pulmonary trunk move down. What is going to happen is that it's something like this. If you pull this the great arter aorta in your ha hand here, pull it down, you will have everything down and the ventricles uh, superior inferior related, what are you going to happen? You have long, long brachiocephalic arteries, okay? And then the other is that the uh, airway will be stretched and elongated. It usually does not have severe disease, but the problem is the airway problem because that airway is displaced all the way down. So here is an example, the great arteries are down here, and then you can see trachea comes down, and then airway is significantly stretched. One thing that I want to emphasize, after we reported one case, there are a couple of cases followed. Very interestingly, most of the cases are in Middle Eastern or South Asian families. There certainly is some genetic happens. So what's the autopsy turvy heart? Organoaxial rotation, not twisting around the base apex axis. Four chamber view arranged in a coronal plane, elongated head and neck branches of the aorta, and then elongation and stretch of the trachea and compression of the left main bronchus. Okay. So to summarize it, the, when you have a very abnormal uh, chamber orientation, there are three categories. One is twisting, the other is the tilting, the other is organoaxial rotation. If you simply think about this mechanism, and then you might have a far better understanding of the whole pathology. Thank you very much for your attention.